You know the word legend is often overused? Not in this case. Today we're going to look at the mesmerically brilliant Mexican featherweight superstar of the 80s, Salvador Sanchez. Uh, we're going to go through the five fearsome factors that I think made him the absolute top, top fighter that he was. Um, and also, I'm going to tell you about my dream fight that could have happened, but sadly for the world of boxing, never did happen. Um, my name's Fran Sands. Welcome to My Got Boxing Coach. Before we get started, go and join the thousands of others who've downloaded their book, The Beginner Boxer Toolkit. 68 pages packed full of information and insights to help you on your boxing journey, regardless if you're in this for fitness or for competition. We talk about how to set up your own home gym, how to build the right mindset to get the right training regime, uh, the five rules to hit the heavy bag with, seven steps to shadow boxing brilliance. There's all kinds in there. It's a book that you'll come back to year after year. There is a link down below. There will be a link at the end. Just go to the, click that link, enter your email, and I will get that book to your email inbox. Okay. Salvador Sanchez, featherweight champion, made nine defences um, from 1980 to 1982. Tragically killed in a car crash just three weeks after his final fight uh, in which he defeated Azuma Nelson. Uh, he finished his career with a, a record of 44 wins, one loss and one draw. Um, the really, For me, the greatest tragedy in the history of boxing. I mean, look, of course it was a tragedy for, for him, his family, dying at the age of 23, it's nothing. But to have crammed in 46 fights in that time, 10 pro at the age of 16, fighting two or three times, you know, uh, or once every couple of months. But we never saw his prime. We never saw his... The, the very best he could offer. He, only, he was only 23. I reckon at that weight in boxing, even back then, you're probably hitting your peak, 25, 26, 27, even up to 28 and 29. So we hadn't seen the best of him. But what a fighter. And let's go through his fearsome factors. So thing number one about Salvador Sanchez is his balance and his guard. He's beautifully versatile, but his basic balance, his basic uh, stance is he has he has a nice wide stance, and he keeps his hands in. He's, he's either here or he's here. Okay, he's none of this messing round with with hands down here. So what's the the beauty of this is? It's only ever a minor adjustment for him to carry out blocks, so he can block there, there, there. He's, it's all within easy reach. Everything that he does is smooth and in the easy reach. He's got that nice width on the stance. Um, and when he does square up, so he will go square, but you know, generally this is a nice wide stance. He's got his, his blade and it's nicely offset from foot at rear foot. If he does go into a square stance, when he's up close and he's wailing away with the punches, he goes into overdrive with his body movement. So his head moves every, you know, it's constant head movement. So defensively, supremely aware. But his balance and his guards, beautifully balanced fighter with that principle of being practical. Hands always ready in the guard position. Fearsome factor number two. So the second wonderful aspect of his style. And I love this one. He has this, this beautiful just little bounce yeah, and now he's on the edge of range. His jab is a is a is, is a primary weapon. Okay, we'll come on to that a little bit in a minute. But he's constantly on the edge of range, and he does this little bounce. So, he, but when the opponent, he's happy. Now he, he put he exerts lots of pressure, but he's happy to back away. He'll do that little push out, bump, bump, and then he'll, he's back in. So, so that little bounce. And he shows that perpetual motion, putting pressure on, but that willingness to do the, the little push away. You know, that little, okay, from there. But the jab and the triggers at long range, which brings us on to number three. 
The angles and variation of his punches are unreal. He, so his long range work, nothing, you know, not, nothing to criticize here. Beautiful jab, fast, gets it right at the long range with his right hand. He really rotates them hips, bang, brings it in. It's not terribly straight. He always likes to bring them in at slight angles, but he gets the power right off the back leg. His hooks and uppercuts, it's very much a spectrum. So what do I mean by that? Doesn't matter where you are, he'll vary the type of hook accordingly, right? So I've even seen him in his fights throw uppercuts where his hands are here, so he's palmed out, very unusual throwing shots like that, right? Normally the, the palm would be facing in, but he'll just, whatever is right for that particular moment in the fight, he will vary the shot accordingly. So he'll be bang, bang, uppercuts, hooks. And he's, he's always looking for the setup. So he'll jab the body, jab the body, jab the body, bang, backhand into the head. Yeah, his, his body shots in general, utterly vicious, as are most top Mexican fighters. You know, their body punching is a massive, massive part of their, their game. So that variation of shots and the fact that he has a shot for every, every scenario, depending on where the opponent is in, uh, in respect of his own position. Here's some factor number four, the fourth thing that we come on to. Punching with body movement. Oh my word, they, this guy. So there's this, um, uh, there's, there's this thing back in the day when people smoked. Do you remember that? When people smoked in pubs and bars and what have you. Over here in England, it was considered bad luck to take the third light. So you'd see guys standing at the bar get the cigarettes out. You'd light the first one, light the second one. Whoever was third light, he'd blow the lighter out and, and take the light again. Now, as with all of these things, you know, there's, is it myth? But the actual tale was that it comes from the trenches in the First World War. So British squaddies would be standing, they'd be lighting the so cigarettes. By the time they got to the third soldier, uh, enemy sniper, spot the position, ping, dead, hence. Never take third light, because it's bad luck. Well, in boxing, any punch you throw is the equivalent of third light, right? So, and Sanchez knows this. Sanchez knows that when he throws his own punches, he's at his most vulnerable. So he has this beautiful thing. Even at long range, he'll go bang, throw the jab and roll his head. Backhand, slip out, roll his head, bang, bang, bang. Every time he's throwing shots, when he comes up close, remember his guard position. So he's even got that ability to block here. But he'll throw uppercuts and hooks and he'll constantly roll or slip or sh off to the side. So that's an amazingly effective... It's an amazingly effective tactic. Every time you throw a punch, do a head movement. We can do drills on that. In fact, the next video, I might do some drills on that very, that very concept, the Sanchez head movement. Head movement at long range, off long range shots, head movement at close range. And people look at it and go, wow, look at him avoiding them punches. He's just playing an odds game. He's throwing the shots and he's moving his head. It's a simple concept, but he does it brilliantly consistently and with great discipline and effectiveness. Move your head after the shots. Always remember, third light, okay? It'll keep you safe. And finally, his conditioning. Um, you watch any of the fighters he's up against. You know, these are fantastic fighters. We are not talking about guys who are there to make up the numbers. Danny Little Red Lopez, Juan Laporte, um, Wilfredo Gomez, Azuma Nelson. You know, these are 
absolutely awesome fighters. After eight or ten rounds in the ring, when you look at the corner, when you go back to a corner, watch it. When you go back to a corner, they sit down in the seat. They look like they've been, they've spent the last six hours involved in a barroom brawl against, you know, multiple chapters of the Hells Angels with bikes and uh, bike chains and bars and bottles and God knows what. You look in the other corner, Sanchez looks like he's spent the last hour drinking tea with the Dalai Lama. I mean, just totally serene, not, you know, doesn't look like there's anything, nothing to see here. He's steaming involved in some of the most high intense intensity rounds of boxing, 10, 12, 13 rounds of boxing. And this guy's just sat in the corner. Now, as if it wouldn't be hard enough for the fighter, imagine us being a trainer in the opposite corner and looking across the ring and looking at your guy and looking at Sanchez. What do you do, you know? It's, it's just unbelievable. The conditioning, the engine, the, the, the ability to set a pace and just go and go and go. I've, I'm not sure I've ever seen a fighter like that. I'd love you to be able to say, oh yeah, no, here's, an, here's another guy, but just watch the Sanchez fights on YouTube. Watch how serene and calm he looks in the corner after, after heavy, heavy rounds of, of boxing. Five fearsome factors. For me, the complete box fighter. Box fighter is, a, I suppose, an old term. It's for just demonstrate someone who can, who can box superbly and who can stand in the trenches and apply those boxing skills and be a great fighter as well. Can fight the way out of trouble. My dream fight. So Sanchez was a featherweight when he when he passed away. Um, Julio Cesar Chavez uh, was a super featherweight in the eighties, and um, it's perfectly conceivable that within a few years, Sanchez, at the age of maybe twenty six, twenty seven, could have met. Chavez at super featherweight. Sanchez growing out a bit, moving up in weight. My God, can you imagine that fight? <laughs> I mean, two of the most consummate pressure fighters, counter punches, incredible conditioning. That would have been one of the great fights in history. Probably mightn't have, you know, you know, been a big money fight, but in the boxing world, for people who knew boxing, that will have been, that could have been one of the the great fights of the 80s and indeed all time i would on i what i would do to see that to see that fight that's my dream fight i hope you've enjoyed that maybe the next video i'll do some drills some sanchez drills to focus on that head movement after shots it's, it's a wonderful technique to keep you safe in, in the line of fire in the meantime, don't forget, go and download your book, The Beginner Boxer Toolkit. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed. Look, go and watch Salvador Sanchez. Understand him. It's just, he's just unbelievably beautiful and brilliant to watch. What a, what a sad loss to the sport of boxing and all of those fights that didn't happen. Anyway, I'm getting quite sentimental about it. Go and download your book. I will see you in the next video.